So I'm on the road right now, which means I'm just traveling around with my laptop. And that means that I actually don't have all the different environments I normally have on my main rig. And additionally, often there's all sorts of different applications that I want to try out or different programming languages. And I don't want to insult all of the dependencies on my main engineering machine. And that's where dev containers come in, which give you a container, an environment that's bundled up into a container that has the operating system, that has all of the bits and pieces and SDKs that you need to compile up and deploy those types of applications. So it's an amazing piece of technology. And I'm going to show you how you can get set up in just a few minutes inside of VS Code. So I'm over here and I'm on this a little beautiful Jekyll repo. And I've gone on and forked this because recently I was working on a Jekyll website with a friend and I just wanted to kind of take a look at it and build it up. Now, I didn't really know much about Jekyll at all, but I know I definitely didn't want to install the dependencies. So the first thing I did is I cloned this over here. So I grabbed the URL and I cloned it inside of Visual Studio Code. Now over here, again, I didn't know much, but there is a bunch of like Ruby gems and a bunch of other stuff. I don't know anything about Ruby, but I do know that I want to be able to compile up this application. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your extensions and make sure you have the dev containers extension installed. And additionally, you'll want to install either Podman or Docker Desktop to make sure you're able to run these containers up. So I've gone ahead and installed the dev containers here. And then inside of the search bar, you can search for dev containers. Now there's a bunch of them inside of here. I actually like this little view on the bottom left right over here, which is open remote window. This will actually show you a bunch of different commands for dev containers or maybe even GitHub code spaces. But what we want to do over here is we want to say add dev container configuration files. And this is going to ask me if I want to add it to the user data folder or to the workspace. Well, I want to add it to the workspace. Now, this is going to show me all of the different configuration files that are out there. And there's a bunch that are in here based on what's here. You can say show all to this will show you everything. So you can see things from the dev containers team or from the community as well. And you know, if you just search for like .NET, for example, you get a bunch of .NET ones inside of here, which is cool. So I'm just going to say Jekyll and there's an official one. So developing static websites with Jekyll, perfect. And I'll say bullseye as the default and you can add other features as well, but I'm just going to say, okay, give me the default that's inside of here. Now what's going to happen here is that it's going to go ahead and add this Jekyll here with this image. And it's going to say, oh, there's all these additional features. You can have ports, you can have post create commands, you can do all sorts of different stuff inside of here, but this is the base. And this has been added over into a .dev container folder. So there's the dev container.json and we're totally good to go. Now actually had a little pop-up that was just over there, but if you miss the pop-up that says reopen this inside your dev container, you can click on that open remote and then say reopening container. And what this is going to do is it's going to create the dev container for me and open up this beautiful Jekyll repo automatically. Now this is going to take a little bit of time because what it's going to do is do a Docker pool of this specific container image on my machine. And then it's going to spin it up. And then my source code and everything's going to be living inside this container where I'm doing those changes, which is really, really neat. All right. So it's starting up over here, which is cool. I had pulled this image earlier and it did take about a minute or so, but here we go. Here's the entirety here. And we can see on the bottom left that we have configuring here. We can see that there it's doing a, a Ruby gem for us automatically. And it's pulling all this stuff for us, which is cool. Now it is connected. So when I click on that again, we can see that I can actually close the remote connection if I want to over here, or I can come in and I can just start running uh, different commands. So if I was to open up a new uh, uh, bundle here and I say bundle exec Jekyll serve, uh, what this is going to do is build my actual Jekyll website automatically inside of this container. And I can actually open it automatically inside the previewer. So here's my Jekyll website running specifically inside of the dev container. And this has gone off and it's actually forwarded the ports for us automatically. So it's not running on my machine and install any crazy Ruby things on my machine. And it's all there automatically. Now, if I show you and I open up Docker desktop over here, we can see that this is the container that's running here. So I have a bunch of different ones that were spun up, but this is the one that's running. That is all of this environment here for me. So now when I'm ready, I can go ahead and actually commit this. And again, this is living inside of the container, which is really, really cool. Now what's additionally really neat about this is that you can take this dev container, you can run it in different uh, code editors and IDEs. And of course you can then run it inside of GitHub code spaces. So you don't have to run anything on your local machine at all. You can run it in the cloud. Anyways, that is my quick introduction to dev containers. You can do this for any different programming language out there. You can bundle it all up. But I wanted to give you a quick overview because I recently, again, was messing around with this Jekyll website and I wanted to easily get it up and running without having any hassle at all. 
This is how you can do it with dev containers. Let me know what you think in the show notes and the, the comments below. If you like this at all and you've been using dev containers or GitHub code spaces, let me know as well. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and jam that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, have a good one.